Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today I made four different cards using the Altenew Cube Builder stencil. Um, and I did these different combinations just to see what they would look like. And the one that I'm gonna create in the video is the blue one. This one I think is my favorite, the gray one. Here is the stencil. I know it doesn't look like a cube, but it's a really cool stencil. I'm also using this Technique Tuesday die and the Simon Says Stamp Happy Birthday die. I started all my cards with colored cardstock. You wanna hold the stencil so that the line is more vertical than horizontal. You can see you have a steeper angle here than you do here. So you wanna have it more vertical. Now I'm gonna center it on this piece of cardstock. I'll flip it over and I had a couple of extra pieces of masking tape, so I'm just going to adhere it from the back. That way I have full access to the panel on the front. This cardstock is Soft Sky by Stampin' Up. And here are the three inks I'm gonna use. I've got Soft Sky so that I have a tone on tone, a Marina Mist, which is gonna give me just a slightly darker color, and then I'm using white as well. I have the right side of the cube showing through my stencil, so I'm gonna start with my dark ink, and I'm just gonna use a sponge dauber to color in what is showing. Um, and I'm gonna speed this up quite a bit, but you can see that I'm just making sure that I get good coverage and even coverage over all of these diamonds here. Now this stencil was really made to only use two colors, and then the color of the cardstock would be your third color, but I'm actually using three colors, and I'll tell you why in a second. So let me peel this off, and you can see what it looks like so far. Now I'm gonna wash my stencil, and this is what I'm gonna do. So where it was before, I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm going to flip it upside down. And that way I will be on the areas that I have not covered yet to the left side. So this is going to be a lighter color, but still blue. So I'm gonna show you, th it's this box right here. This is a wild wasabi one that I did. Okay, so here is my soft sky. So this is gonna be more of a tone on tone. Now the reason why I'm using three inks, I'm gonna use white on the top part here, is because there is a little bit of a line in between all of these cube sides and it really defines the cube a lot more to have three colors. All right, so let's pick this up and you can see it's really starting to take shape. Now you could leave it like this, which is kind of how the stencil was meant to be used, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the white. You could also use it as is in this vertical direction and it looks really cool as a background. The stencil wasn't really made to use on the top part of the cube, so I'm just gonna make it work. So I'm gonna twist it diagonally, and uh, you can see that I don't have some of those cubes fully covered. Now I'm gonna take my white ink, I'm using Stampin' Up! white ink, and you can see over here where you would not want to color that box, and I'll have to move the stencil to get to that, and also this one as well. So really what you're gonna do is color all the ones that are fully exposed. Um, and then once I get all of those covered, I'll pick up the stencil, I'll move it to the location that needs it, and I'll do it again. So now I'm moving the stencil down so that I get full exposure of the areas that have not yet been covered with the white. And uh, then I'll just press it down. And each time the masking tape uh, is still on the back of my cardstock and I'm just pressing the stencil once I get it positioned right. All right, so now I'm, I have to do this two times because I have to do the bottom ones and then the top ones. It's really not that big of a deal and this is really easy to line up. So here are my finished cubes and you can see what I mean with the lines between the different faces of the cube. I'm gonna go one step further with this stencil and add some shading. This is one of the ones I was practicing on, but I wanted to show you where I'm adding the shading, where the X's are at the top and then down the side here. So you can see I kind of cover the back corner, bring it along the side and go down. I am using soft granite ink. I want my shading to be very light and subtle. So what I'm doing here is I'm priming my sponge dauber. I just wanna make sure I have it fully loaded with ink so that I really don't have to put too much pressure on my cardstock to get the color to come out. So I'm just gonna do this on a post-it off to the side and now I'm gonna start working on the white area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sponge dauber the top and then the right kind of side to the, on the upper side, just like I showed you where those X's were. And I'm using an extremely light hand. Um, and you notice that I'm covering the right part, this diamond next to it, because I don't want to get any of that gray ink over to the side in the next one, because that's not where the shading is. That's where the brightest part of the next cube is. So it's really important to use this post-it. I didn't use it the first time, and it's really hard to stay in these diamonds here. 
The reason why I used gray ink is because the black was just a little bit too much. That practice sheet I showed you, I used black soot on that. It was just too dark. So this is nice and subtle. You can see how beautiful it looks. Now, because I did it on the white part, I wasn't able to uh, expose all of my diamonds. So I had to do the same thing that I did before, which is pick up the stencil and move it around until I was able to cover all the white areas with my gray ink. Once I'm done with all my diamonds, I'm gonna go back with my white sponge dauber and just sort of blend any hard edges that I see. The second part of the shading is on my darkest face. So I'm gonna cover everything except for the marina mist and I'm gonna go through the same thing, but I'm going down the right side of the diamond here. And this is much easier than when I did it on the white because you can press harder and you don't have to worry about uh, edges and it not blending because it just seems to work really well on the dark color. It just sort of blends on its own. So I have to use my uh, mask at the top to cover up those diamonds so that I don't hit the gray in the diamond above. All right, so let's take this off and it looks so dimensional. I was really happy with the way these came out. Now I'm gonna work on the rest of the card. I've cut the happy out of white and the birthday out of black. And with this particular die, it cuts the birthday and it ha it's connected to the paper below it. So I just cut a thin strip under that. So I'm gonna add some two-way glue to the bottom and I'm adhering it to a piece of vellum just at the bottom. And then I'll take my happy and put some two-way glue on the back of it. And I'm gonna overlap it just a little bit so that I have the same distance between the H and the top and the line of the birthday and the bottom. So I added some two-way glue behind all of the letters on the vellum because you can see two-way glue through the vellum. So then I placed it down and I was hoping that I wouldn't have to add some glue in the corners, but I am gonna do that later. So I just did some tape runner and put it on a card base, which is just Nina Solar White folded. And then I'm gonna add some sequins. This is my favorite sequin pack, it's by Stampin' Up. It's got white, black, clear, gold, and silver. So I've placed six. I've got two black at the top, one in the middle, two white at the bottom, one at the top. So you can see how I've alternated and also they are not equidistant apart. So it looks like they were sort of randomly thrown on the card. I always place all my sequins first and then I use my pick me up stick and some multimedia mat to adhere them to the card. The top corners of my vellum started coming up a little bit so I felt like I needed something under there. So I just squirted a tiny little dot of the multimedia mat and pressed it down and I don't think you would really notice it, but it totally held it in place. I didn't have to worry about it. So that is the card for today. So here is the blue one. I'm gonna show you the other ones. This one is Wild Wasabi, and I used the Tone on Tone Wild Wasabi with some garden green ink in the white, and then I just added some sequins and this congratulations die without anything behind it. I also did a pink one. This is Pink Pirouette with the Pink Pirouette ink and the rose red and the white. Um, and I also use that same happy and birthday, but without vellum. And then finally is the gray and black and white. So it actually is basic gray cardstock and I used black soot ink and white. So I only colored the two sides on that one. And then I added a sentiment strip on top of some vellum. And those are the cards for today. So I really love this cube builder. I had some fun with it. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.